What's up, family and friends? Welcome to the Woke Nation. It is um, 12 at 1 p.m., so 12 noon here in Nigeria, inside this place where I'm quarantined myself for seven days for me to go take the COVID-19 uh, test again, then know where to go from there. Of course, I am well. I am good. I am I'm, I'm COVID-19 uh, negative, so it can never be positive because I'm African, millennium. Yes, and I distance myself from those I know that have it, so I don't get it. So, like at work, I know how they think I'm obsessed with this, telling everybody, put your mask on, put your mask on. You can't come close to me without wearing your mask. So they, they thought I was just doing it, maybe I'm trying to boss people around. No, that's me. Let's be serious. Let us stop deceiving ourselves or fooling ourselves for any reason. The, what you don't know, try to know. Find out the facts. Don't just embrace something because somebody or somebody just said that. You have to think. If you can even listen to yourself, you will know everything about that thing. But the moment you have that mentality, you know, I mean, I, it's not, I may not know it all. Uh, everybody may not know it. You know, we must not know all this thing. You know. You 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 blocking yourself. You are, you are limiting yourself, and you are endangering yourself. It doesn't matter what people say. Okay, this is what we do. As I said in the last video, don't follow the crowd to do wrong thing. That many people are believing certain thing doesn't mean it's true, and that doesn't mean it's good for you. That doesn't mean it work for you. Know yourself. So. When you know yourself, you will know the factual truth that you don't even need readers. But I want to work on you and encourage you before I continue on this. I title it the leaders. I want to speak on that. But I want to encourage you to seek for the knowledge of truth. Excuse me. Hello? Huh? I don't know yet. I know I know online. I'm not sure. So, I want to encourage you to seek for the knowledge of truth. The knowledge of factual truth will always set you free. The knowledge of religious truth will never set you free. The knowledge of societal truth will never set you free. Those things are what some people put in place. It's called system. You can never be free in any system. You can never be yourself. You can never live your life. You have to, you know, come to yourself. Then you separate yourself from there. Remember, like the story they put in the Bible about the guy they call prodigal son. Look at what happened to him, right? In that story, he left his family and went to in the foreign country, having fun. But he, he already cut off his himself from his source. He's no longer connected to his root no matter how he's enjoying his life on the other side it will not last he will suffer 
for it and they suffered for it but no condition is permanent they say one day he came to himself and he began to ask questions how can my father have all this and i'm here suffering even if i offended him before i will go back even if living in his house in my father's house as a servant no i rather be servant in my father's house than be in a strange land walking my ass off and not enjoying life at least he has somewhere to go to some people in this life don't have anywhere to go to anymore like african americans even the africans who are their brothers are not don't have any plan for them they all the, the, they stay in Africa running their mouth. African Americans, you know they are this, see how they dress, see how they say, bullshit. Are they not our brothers and sisters? Is uh, 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 we have any government in in Africa that said, listen, call all the heads of government as you call them, the leaders in Africa, and say we're gonna walk with within ourselves. We have to, no matter who is against it. We can never allow the United Nations to have their way. We can never allow the U whatever they call them. To, we have to build our weapons, build our own power. We want to bring our people back. It's a history. They took them as slaves by force. You said they were buying it. No, they were giving money to their colleagues, our, our brothers and sisters who were sellouts. They weren't buying slaves. For Africans weren't selling slaves until white people came. They taught us slavery. There is no true African you will see that involve or engage in, in, slave, in slave trade. No way. You have to be converted first. They did that. Matthew 23 verse 15. They converted Africans first. They used them to achieve their evil goals. And they did not only achieve their evil goal and maybe get away with it, they established those evil in our land, which you call institutions of learning, religious institutions. Those evil institutions there, you think, oh, they're doing us good, no, they're doing us harm. They're not helping us. They need that. So you need to seek it. Do it for yourself. You have to know for yourself, not knowing what other people tell you you should know. No, you have to know for yourself so you can stand and speak when others are speaking. There is no one that's supposed to be speaking over your life. You are the one that's supposed to be speaking for yourself because you matter. Understand that before white men came to us, we had no leader. We don't need leader because all of us, we are leaders. Leaders don't need leader over them. It is evil. It is against nature for people to have a leader over them. It is evil. So I want to speak on the leaders or the leader. It's not because of maybe Donald Trump case that I began. No, I already have this before Donald Trump. But you see, when you are working with nature, everything will be happening. You will never lack examples. You will never lack message. We never lack what to say. You never lack knowledge. You will never lack understanding. You never lack wisdom. Why? Because it is natural. Those things you can get, you, you get them naturally. It is natural and you are part of this nature. So you can never lack words. You can never lack knowledge. The knowledge in this universe is infinite, just as you are infinite. There is no end to this universe. And there is no end to the knowledge in this universe. But those institutions they put around, those systems, is to put you down, to stop you from thriving. And that's what the knowledge of factual truth comes to do, to liberate you from that bondage and open the way for you, for you to see that you are the darkness that's supposed to be giving light to the world. You are not evil. It's the light that is evil. Any light that is against darkness that is evil. And you still see majority of our people still talking down, down, down about darkness or against darkness. When you say darkness is evil, you are saying black is evil. When you say darkness is evil, you are saying you, a black person, African, you say you are evil. They have brainwashed us. They have indoctrinated us. They have programmed us. They have conditioned us so deep. We think our skin is evil. Darkness is evil. Darkness is upon the land. Light come. Where did light come from? Light comes from darkness. What I produce 
can never be good and I'm evil. No, evil beget evil, good beget good. If light is good, that darkness that brought that light forth is good, even better. I said, we ask people, you and your mother, who is greater? You and your own mother, your biological mother, who is greater? No matter what, your mother is greater than you, but you have been brainwashed, indoctrinated, and believe your mother is under you. Your mother must submit because you have penis. Then you think you are greater than your mother because you can fuck women. You think it makes you higher. And it's religion and the, the society that made us see women like that. So that's how it is. Darkness, light comes from darkness. Before your religion has a beginning, before your God coming to uh, uh, come in the same, darkness has been there. It's even in your in their book. Say there was darkness all over the world. Then their God began to say, Let there be light. And they say that, that their God called that light out of darkness. And after creation and everything, where did their God hide in that nobody saw him? In the darkness. That is where you see God in the darkness. You cannot see God in the light. That's why they say God were in what unapproachable light, which no man have seen or can see. Oh man, how I wish you will understand this. It's so simple. When you when you go back to your source, when you go back to your root, which is science, you will see how simple things are. You will know that no condition is permanent and there's nothing you cannot change. There's nothing you want to do that you cannot do. But if you begin to listen to their distractions and all that, you will not achieve anything. You will keep struggling. You will join them. You join the crowd and you'll be they are also bound. Let me read some places in the Bible. Welcome to Bible study. My family and friends, let's dig something up there. Habakkuk Haba cook. Haba cook something. Chapter one, verse fourteen. Haba cook one fourteen. It says, "Why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler over them? Why do you make men?" Like what? <laughs> like this, the fish of the sea. So the fish of the sea has no king, right? They have no leader. But you have. Our ancestors had no leader over them. Before the white men came. And they say, oh, how can we live, live these people living like this? They have no leader. Nobody is taking advantage of them. Nobody is putting them to shame. All of them are living freely, enjoying things, having everything in common. Come on, that's not the way we, 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 we were taught. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We must destroy it. We must change it. That's why I say they came to steal. They came to kill. They came to destroy. They came to possess. They destroy you and possess your land and saying it is their land. They put their flag there. They put their institutions there. They put their things there. So when you're talking, the confusion is there already. You keep confused because you, you, you're looking on what they're saying. Ignore them. Pay no mind to their lies and you will see how free you will live. How long will you be in need of a leader? I see majority of people that are still looking for a leader. Some of them want me to be their leader. That person, my leader, my, my mentor, my bullshit or my bullshit that. No, you don't need me as your leader. You don't need anyone as your leader. You are the leader you are looking for. You are the God you are looking for. You are the Jesus Christ you are looking for. You are the Messiah you are looking for. Well, how long will you continue suffering like that because you have that desire for, I, I have to have a leader? The reason why you are suffering, everyone in this world, no one is exempted. The reason why we are suffering is because of our desire. And you know what they tell you? They are, God will give you your heart desire. It's a lie. God, no God can give you your heart desire. Anything you desire, you have to work for it. 
and some of them you succeed, some of them you fail, some of them you suffer unnecessarily, some of some of them you don't suffer. It's a desire that drives people. It's a people that lacks desire. People that yield their own desire and begin uh, and begin to live like slaves and in need of leaders. They don't have their life. They don't have a life. They can't enjoy life or either. They are the one that we fight against you, trying to liberate them, trying to open their eyes. Because they don't have desire to lead. They have desire to follow. So they become, they remain slaves that they made them. Let me read it from Proverbs chapter 6. Or 20, 88. Proverbs chapter 6. Oh man, I remember when I used to. <laughs> That, that's a study proverb like crazy. I want wisdom. I'll be reading it. Proverb, I must read it. Okay, see, so I want to read from verse five, 6. Proverb chapter 6, verse 6. If you add it another 6, it becomes 6, 6, 6. I am 6, 6, 6. Whatever you call 6, 6, I am. So whatever you call it, what do you call it? I know what this is. It's not what the Bible says. It says, go to the ant and you sluggard. Go to the ant, you lazy person. Go to the ant, you that is looking for a leader. Go to the ant, you that is religious. Go to the leader. I mean, go to the ant. Go to the ant, consider her ways and be wise. Which, hear what it says, consider her ways and be wise. That's why I keep saying, like, consider our ancestors. I never tell you to consider white people or, you know, consider our ancestors. Consider our true African history, not our colonized history, not our colonized ancestors. Our great ancient African ancestors. You have to consider them, their ways, their wisdom, their science, their exploits. That's how you can regain your wisdom. You gain wisdom by considering things, not by believing things. You cannot gain wisdom by faith. You cannot gain, gain wisdom by believing. You gain wisdom by consideration, investigation, looking through it. You know, make sure this is what it is. That's how you gain wisdom. Then you can direct somebody else. Do it this so, so way and it will work. The person do it, it works. That is what is called wisdom. Say, how long, you slogan? Quit having, he said, go to the ant and learn. Or go to the ant, consider her ways and be wise. Quit have, having no captain. The ant, the ant, all of them, they have no captain. They have no overseer. You do. My general overseer, our, our G.O., Daddy in the law said, yeah, before I marry, you know, I must seek counsel from the elders or from the church. Uh, daddy, my daddy overseer. You don't need captain over your life. You don't need overseer over your life. You say you don't also need ruler. You said the ants, having no captain, overseer or ruler, provide. If you can provide for yourself, you don't need any God. You can, if you can provide for yourself, you don't need any Jesus. The people that need God or Jesus are people who don't know themselves. They believe what the book says concerning them. That they are nothing without God. They are nothing without Jesus. They say, okay, that's true. They believe. But they forgot that they are the one that is walking. They are the one that is going... I ran for that God. Where is that God doing anything? Nowhere. Be that belief is what made them slaves. Every believer is a slave. Slave of God or slave of Christ. You cannot escape. You cannot tell me you have faith in God and you are not a slave. It's a believer telling you he's free. No, you are not. No, there is no free believer. All of them are living in bondage. Every religious person, everyone that believes in God or Jesus, everyone that is praying, is living in bondage, all of them. You see how guilt, uh, how you used to feel guilty when you miss church service then, when you are still unbeliever. But now you are waking, they see how free you are. You look better, no longer fasting unnecessarily. For what? Why? I need to fast and pray for God to do anything. 
say these people, I mean, this act, they have no ca captain, they have no over, 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 overseer, they have no, no ruler over them, but they provide uh, their supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. How long will you slumber, O oh sluggard? When will you rise from your sleep? That's why people like myself keep telling you, wake up, wake up. When will you rise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little faith. If I have faith as little as mustard seed, I will make it such little faith, little slumber. Little sacrifice, little worship, little this, little that, in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. A little folding of hands to sleep. Wait upon the Lord. You are waiting upon the Lord. And the time, the God's time is the best. He will do it. Don't worry, keep praying. From the sign, they are taking your substance. And you are praying, waiting for that good time, God's time to come. He says, so shall your poverty come on you like a pro, like a prola. And you are need like an armed man. Reality will bite. No matter how you say, you, 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 you claim to believe, you claim to have faith, you claim to fast, pray, waiting upon the Lord, reality will bite. Your poverty will come and your need will come as armed man. On that will put you down. You be, that's why you see you, you begin to do shameful things. You begin to carry back for a small boy. You begin to bow before a small boy because you refuse to learn from the ant. You think you need a leader over your life. You think you need an overseer over your life. You think you need a pastor over your life. You think you need a covering over your life. You don't need all that bullshit that telling you. How long will you be in need of a leader? How long will you be following a leader? When will you grow up and be yourself and live your own life? You're supposed to know that you are a leader. And the wise leaders lead themselves. Wicked leaders lead the masses. It is wickedness that makes the wicked leaders to lead the masses. Masses don't need anyone to lead them. Masses are supposed to lead themselves. All of us who are born, we came to the body of a woman. So what makes you a leader over me? You are not my leader. It's because majority has supported you, then they promote you like that. It's when I come under your nonsense. That's when I, whatever you're doing, we have hold. And even under it, I will still live my life. See what is happening in America. Since yesterday, they're still talking it. You, see, you can see it right there. CNN talking about Trump being coronavirus patient. You know how this guy has let many people die in America. The name of faith. Miracle, miracle will happen. God will do that. No, take hydro, hydroxychloroquine. You know, he would not He has been, he said he, to, he used to take that drug. Where is that drug now? He's tested positive. He is positive. Him and his wife. And I hear some people saying, uh, My heart and my prayer. Uh, that's why I hate politics and religion. Somebody will be doing evil, killing many people. Then when it's time for that person, he say he want to pray. And you say you are, you are not uh, supporting evil. You are supporting evil. If you are supporting forgiveness, you are supporting evil. Forgiveness is evil. What we need is fairness. With fairness, everybody will behave normal. But where, where there is forgiveness, that's where people will, will take advantage of you and ask for forgiveness. And they'll be forgiven. And they're enjoying sitting on your position while you are suffering. Okay, I'm forgiving you. And you continue suffering. See Trump, the leader of free world. That's what they call it. The leader of free world. Is he free now? He's quarantined. Let him come out now. He saw, he knew that this thing was deadly, killing people. He go about doing rallies. Even our own brother, McKinkin, that believe him, follow him. He died. Coronavirus killed him. He attended Trump rally. Overlasting without masks. After they diagnosed him positive, boom, he died. Even before I came to this night, I was saying that, I, I was telling my co-workers that. I said, how, whenever I watch CNN, see those people going to of, of, of Trump rallies, I said, how I wish they contact coronavirus and die. Because that's the only way they can listen. The, the, the few among them that still have little hearing ears, when they see like what happened to Trump, right, they will change. 
But you see those die hard ones, let them contact it also and die. I don't say let them contact it and survive. No. You ignore instruction. You will not escape destruction. They get the science spoke to you. You say, no, you don't care about science. I have a God. Okay. Now you are suffering. You want me to pray? Fuck you and that God. Who will pray? I'm not doing that. See him. In public, he disgraced other people for wearing masks. He said he makes uh, you look weak. Now coronavirus makes him look strong, right? Let him come out now. Let him go around. They try to hide it now. You cannot hide the pregnancy now. It will come out. Because you don't do what you're supposed to do, <coughs> you'll die. That's it. They tell you it's not true. Oh, 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 oh. And you see our people every day. Why, why do they love Trump? Oh, he speak on his mind. That's, bull, that's stupidity. When you are speaking out of foolishness, out of boldness, that doesn't mean you are smart. That doesn't mean you know what you're saying. The science is there. You ignore it. You say, no, it doesn't matter. And many people are dying because they haven't gotten to your tongue. You say all, all is well. It will be your tongue. You see Boko Haram. You see Fulani Hesman killing people in Nigeria. And you say, no, God is good. God is good. You know, God is well keeping me alive. Thank God. You see churches making programs. Thanksgiving service. To thank God for keeping you from coronavirus. But many Christians have already died of coronavirus. They, yet you will not think... Where is this God I've been worshiping? Job chapter 35, verse 10. He said, None among them ask, Where is the, the God they tell the, the, my maker? They say He make me and He gives song in the night. Why am I having sorrow in the night instead of song? Where is this God? None of them will ask that question. What they will ask is, What is your sin? Did you sin? Maybe it's your fault. It's never God's fault. Why are you defending that useless God? Reality bites. People, slaves, are claiming to live in a free world. Trump is the leader of the free world. Yeah, because they made people slaves and telling them, yeah, you are free, don't worry, be here, you are free. They are not. They made you, they made many people to be slaves who believe they are free. They are slaves, they are suffering, but they believe all, all is well. No, I am not suffering. It is God's will for me to suffer, even if I suffer. That's when you give, show them the real evidence of their suffering. They will say, it is God's will. If God allow it, it is His will. I'm, I will accept it joyfully. If God want me to die, even if He slay me, I will yet praise Him. That, you are stupid saying that. Somebody slay you, you say you will yet praise Him because of what a book say. Come on, wake up. Stop being stupid. Stop being dummy by faith. Reality rules over all. That is fact. No matter who you are, whether you are God or goddess, whether you are man or woman, whether you are plant or animal, whatever you claim to be in this world, in this life, reality rules over all. If you must live religion for reality, you must live fiction for reality, you must live allegory for reality, you must live faith for reality, you must live belief for reality. Reality is spring, and we are part of that reality. Reality rules over all. Every knee bows to reality, not to God. I don't bow to God. Fuck God. When you say all knee, we bow to God. No, not my knee. My knee, my knee is not meant to be bowed. No, I, 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 need, I use my knee to walk, not to bow before any God or any Jesus. Reality rules over all. And our ancestors were living by reality. Living in reality. Living with reality until white men came. It was white men that came. But let us consider who or uh, what our ancestors were before white men came. Before white men came to us, we were civilized people. How do you know a civilized people? A civilized people have no locks on their doors. Before white men came to our land, our ancestors, we had no locks on our doors because we are living as a family. Whether you are living far or near, we are one. I don't have any fear that you will come at night to kill me or to do anything to me. No, we are one. You kill me, I come back. 
We are not living in fear. We have no locks on our door. And look at you, they say, God is my protection. You cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Check your windows, burglary proof. Check your door. Block. You are living in fear. You are not civilized. You say you are civilized. You are not. When you have locks on your doors, you see? You see that door? You have locks. This one too. They break this one. You have locks. I, what, 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 are you, what are you afraid of? You are not civilized. Before white men came, our ancestors, we have no locks. On our, we are the first people to build houses. The houses that have windows and doors, our ancestors, with no locks. Some of them even don't put door there. What are you putting door for? You come here, everybody, you see a spot, you lay down and have fun. Before white men came, we have no private property. No private, private property. We were living a socialized life. You see how they're against it today, telling you, oh, socialists, we don't want America to be a socialist country. Socialist country is better than what they have. Taking other people's land and possessing their possession, that's what they have. What do they call it? <laughs> Some people say it's capitalism. <laughs> they capitalize on your stuff and they control you. Whatever they call the other. But look at how our ancestors lived. There, there was no private property. It's family stuff. You don't say this is my land. If I see you there, we kill you. You see people fighting over land. It was after white men came that our people begin to fight over land. They came and corrupted us, telling us, yeah, you can possess this thing. You can have more than everyone here. You can be the king. You can be the leader. And see how our lives are. Before they came, we have no hierarchy among us. We don't have bows and the servant, um, bows and uh, and the servant relationship, or master and the, and the slave relationship. We don't have all that nonsense. We were living as brethren, brothers and sisters, family. We had no beggars. You see people begging. I went to buy uh, uh, fuel for my uh, at the filling station there. And one beggar came. Somebody was pushing him on the wheelchair. He said, please help me. God will bless you. The guy who was selling, gas, who was selling the fuel was there. I said, if you believe God will bless me, let that God bless you. <laughs> I enter my car, get out. How can you be going? Oh, give me. God will bless you. you. Who will bless me? God. So let that God bless you. And that's what I will keep saying to our people until we wake up. You go beg. We, we didn't have any beggar before. How, why are you going to beg when you have a family? When you have kinsmen? Why did they destroy all those things? Telling you they have better one. Your ancestors were evil. But look at your life. You are begging money. Many of you begging money online also. So what are you saying? You heard me? Yes. And after you say there is God, God is blessing you, God is doing this, God is doing that. Which God? We had no beggars. White men brought it. Before white men came, we had no jails. We had no prison yard where you are locking people up. For what? When African proverbs say that it takes a village to train a child. In other words, if you see a child wandering around, you never see that face in that area. You say, where are you coming? Where is your mother? Where, where is your father's house? Where are you coming from? And you see a child misbehaving, you don't know the child. You spank him. Stop that. You don't do that. That's how we grew up. But these people came. They force you. They make some laws and commandments. Tell you, if you don't do it, you are breaking the law and we jail you. They put you in jail. They come to take your possession, you fight, they catch you, they put you in jail, they don't kill you. We had no jails before white men came. We have no police. Police. Police was designed to catch slaves, to catch people to walk by force. You're running away from slavery. The duty of police is to go and catch you. They were slave patrol. 
But today you say police, you know, they're, they're, police are not, they're, they're not your friend. They are still using the police to control it today, whether you like it or not, in their system. Before white men came, we had no army. It is corrupt people that need army. What is the duty of army? I have shared it before. Army goes into other people's land, rape their women, take their land, kill their men and all that. That is the duty of army. Our national security, you know, the army fight for us, the troop. God bless the troop. But they are killing people. You say, oh, life is, 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 is how, how, do, how do all those people that, that, uh, that are against uh, abortion used to say it? The way they put it like they care, but you don't, they don't care. They don't, they can't even feed the poor. But they tell you life is precious. Life, every life matters. Even life in the womb. Life in the womb matters, but you are going to war. What of those people you are killing and taking their land? Their own life don't matter. We had no army. We weren't invading other people, taking their land. That is what the army was used or is used to do till today. Before white men came, we had no corrupt government. If you don't have corrupt government, you don't need army. If you don't have corrupt government, you don't need police. If you don't have corrupt government, you don't need jail. You have jail, police, and army because your government is corrupt. And you are not civilized people. Civilized people live like human beings. All these ones living like animals. One, sometimes I will think, I say, how can somebody be trained in army? And he came out maltreating his own people, killing, beating his own people, killing his own people. You went, they train you to become animal. You see how the military beat some people they call bloody civilians, especially in corrupt places like Nigeria. You see how they beat people around. You wear ordinary clothes. They say it's camouflage. They begin to kill, beat you, tell you to do frog jump inside the dirty water, or ask you to drink it, torturing you like animals. Those people become they train them to to they become animals, to treat their fellow human beings like nothing. I remember one time one army from my village he was bragging. I've signed my dead warrant. I don't care if you want, if you guys touch that ladder, we do this, do this. I said, see. That's what they took. Somebody that came out from a woman's body now has been trained to be a beast to his own fellow human being. Corrupt, we had no corrupt government until white men came. We have government run by the, all the elders in the land. Not one, not one over the whole land. No, all of us we are kings and queens, all of us we are gods and goddesses, all of us we are leaders. Before the white men came, before the white men came, we have no senior home. Why, why, why are you having senior home when you have a home before in America? I see some of them saying, I'm a homeowner, homeowner, they will end up in nursing home, lose their home. It's not like us here in Africa that we have home. No matter when you have home, you don't need senior home. Your children will abandon you. They are maybe visiting you during festival. They go and visit you and waiting for you to die. And that's how you will die. But before white men came, we don't need that because everyone in the family take care of the elderly ones. We don't disrespect elders. We not in America you see people robbing elders. They see old lady, 80 something years old, entering uh, elevator. They rush to take his bag, her bag because they believe there must be money there. There must be, you know, all those money government uh, giving, giving, uh, uh, giving her for uh, work has done all her life. They rob senior citizens, they rob elders. Africans weren't doing all that nonsense. They are the war, and that's why it is prevailing in their land. We, before they came to our land, we have no money currency. Many of you still don't, you don't want to know how money comes in or we begin to use all this money currency. It was not so before. They begin to come out of Germany and Italy. Boom. Today, you see, all of us are worshipping money, whether you like it or not. They created those two gods, God and the money. Say that you cannot serve two of them at the same time. You must love one more than the other. 
You need them. You must not want. <laughs> we have no money currency. You can buy. If you need something, you can use what you have and get it. Or you can talk to the person. Of course, you have. Because the person will give you know that tomorrow he will also have a, get, get, ask you and you give. You have no money currency to control people. It's money currency that introduce all this lending your money with interest. Okay, I will give you, you will pay me interest. You see credit, all that. It is money currency that brought it. And you see some people sitting in office making big money and you are struggling to pay them. Okay, so before they came, we have no rich or poor among us. All of us, we are rich. Everything belongs to every one of us. There's no reason for us to have rich and the poor among us. No reason at all. Don't tell me because, oh, the other person work hard, the other person don't. No. When you grow up in a family, everybody work in the family. Even the lazy one we, among Africans, there's no lazy person among Africans. And that's why they enslave us. They saw we are hardworking people, we are builders. They came and invaded us. There is no reason for having rich or poor among us. And also, before they came, we have no pollution. We are taking care of ourselves, being one with nature. The pollution comes as a result of working against nature. When you work against nature, it will work against you. You will never enjoy it. Nature is designed, just as you are designed, for you to enjoy them. But you see, today, many people are suffering in this world because of pollution. So we were living our life, have no need of leaders until the white men came. They came, they stole, they killed, they destroyed, and they possessed our land. See how we are suffering today. But no condition is permanent. We can lead ourselves again. It starts with you. You are the leader that you said we rise up. Yeah, you are that leader. I'm calling you to rise up so you can lead yourself. When I see how you are leading yourself, I will be encouraged to lead myself. And when we all lead ourselves, then together we can do the impossible. Just as our ancestors did before the beginning of God, before the beginning of religion, before the beginning of Judaism, Christianity, Islam, we can do it again. And I see you doing it.